Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and this is another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We're falling off our chair, all kinds of stuff going on. And it's the last day of Hanukkah, so Tristan's wearing his Hanukkah bow tie. And this morning, um, it's a whole weekend of new wonderful things that you can have to help you with your dogs and cats and horses. And today we're going to talk about my sister's new book, which is Yin and Yang, Nutrition for Dogs. And the rest of the title is Maximizing Health with Whole Foods, Not Drugs. And if you know me from um, Corgi Nation, You'll know a few people have had some issues with their dogs and I have written to them to please check out this book. The book is a great thing to have if you have a dog diagnosed with cancer or any kind of organ trouble, liver, kidney, whatever, um, in particular, because it gives you special diets that you can make for your dog at that point. And many people whose dogs have these diagnoses are willing to do anything besides expensive rounds of chemo and drugs. And some people may choose to do that as well, but you certainly want to support the whole system of your dog. And the recipes in this book and the information that you can get are really going to help you And if your dog is sick. And then the other important thing is this book will help you have a dog that doesn't get sick. Part of what it is about is Chinese medicine theory. So your dog will be one of five elements, earth, air, water, metal, and fire. And then each of those elements corresponds to different times of the year when, um, like in the spring, I have a fire dog. So in the spring, he's actually doing pretty well because the dampness of the rain helps tone down that fire a little bit. Right now, he's a little like the fires in California. This guy, I'm feeding him cold food and he's a hot dog and he is still kind of, oh, really high on the fire end. He's been barking a lot. I need to go to the store and get him some sardines or something there. It just really kind of put that fire out a little bit because he's a very excitable corgi these days. He's not his usual self. Does he look excitable? We've got new neighbors moving in. I think that's part of it. He feels the need to bark at the moving van and the new cars and the people and stuff coming and going and the lawn people. And it's been a busy time to be a corgi in this house. So anyway, part of the other thing that you learn in this book is how to tell if you've got a hot or a cold dog. And there is a whole page in here, God willing, I can find it right this minute, of what qualities constitute a hot and a cold dog so that you can determine what your dog is. Now, one of the easiest ways to tell whether you have a hot or a cold dog is to look at the color of his coat. Um, here you go. It's on page... 37. It's called Characteristics of Yin and Yang, which my sister pronounced Yang, but here in New England, we don't pronounce it that way. So if you have a hot dog, you're going to have a lot of extra Yang in him. And he, fire in, and heat is related to the small intestine, which has indeed been typically an area of trouble for Tristan. And let's see, where's the hot and the cold page? Toxic foods. So one of the things that you can uh, identify whether you have a hot or dog, hot or cold dog by is his coat color. My dog is orange and orange is a hot color. So that's one of the things to look at to see that your dog is a hot dog. So most corgis that are this orange color are going to be um, hot. Let me find that page. You'd think I would have stuck a marker in it. Well, it wasn't listed in the index either. But one of the interesting things is that um, on page 41, it has the energetics of food. And then there's other pages that have um, there's cooling foods and heating foods. So you've got these pages with lists of things that you can do to feed your dog to balance that excess he might have of either too much heat or too much cold. And because my dog, like many red colored dogs, that would be Irish setters and corgis and 
um, maybe some Chowser orange, some lab crosses, golden retrievers, certainly. You want to give them cooling foods, which includes dock turkey, cod, clams, rabbit, alligator, shark, egg whites, mussels, duck eggs, frog, herring, oysters, scallops, white fish, and octopuses. Now, I'm a vegetarian and I had pet rabbits for years, so we're not feeding this corgi rabbit, but he does get duck and turkey, and I think this week I'm going to try to get him uh, some herring or something like that to really cool him down because he's been a bit rambunctious over the top like can't control himself and then it also lists vegetables and herbs one of the vegetables that's cooling is spinach and I give him on his kitchen dehydrated food and so there's a lot of spinach in that so that's actually a good thing for him and spinach is also draining so it helps keep some of uh uh, his he has prone to like kidney bladder issues um, and so that spinach is helping with that as well plus he's on cranberry pills now as well so this is one of the things you can learn from this book if your dog like my friends have dappled dachshunds and you know they're black and gray and orange and so some of those dogs <laughs> may be hot and some are cold so my friends have one of each one hot dog and one cold dog and of course they're both hot dogs technically so um, determining whether your dog is hot or cold can really be a big impact on what you're feeding him if your dog is a hot dog like mine chicken's a hot food and so feeding him chicken is just going to feed that fire and create behavior problems skin problems overall inflammation any kind of problem that can come from inflammation including autoimmune disorders can be related to having a hot dog and feeding him fire. Um, and then there's a whole list of other things that can go wrong if you have a cold dog and feed him cold food. Now, lots and lots of dog food is chicken. So if you have a cold dog and you're just feeding something generic, you're probably doing it all right because the chicken is a hot food. And that's just the first piece of understanding what to feed your dog. So the other interesting and wonderful thing about my sister's new book is that there are pages and pages of recipes. For instance, this one is a diet for heart failure. So it shows you a beautiful picture of all of the foods that your dog needs to eat and actually in the proportions that you'd want to give them. And then across the page is a recipe for putting those foods together. And many, many of them you can either put in the slow cooker slash crock pot or you can grind them up and give them raw depending on your dog and what your capacity is there and even if you are uh, choosing to just scramble this up in a frying pan for your dog i mean it's celery and kale and spinach and broccoli and it looks like red cabbage and um, shiitake mushrooms and celery and two cans of sardines or no two canned sardines not two cans of sardines um, and also basil, which dogs tend to really like, mustard greens, cabbage, turkey gizzards, um, chicken, turkey, or cubed rabbit. Uh, bone may be included if you're feeding it raw. So those things are mostly fairly available. And if I had a dog with heart failure, I would certainly be happy to know what I should feed him that's really going to help him. So that's some of the things that you can learn from this book. And there's diets for... Um, pancreatitis and obesity and kidney support let's just look at the kidney support one it includes wild salmon and wild fish in general is a cold food hot fish I mean a farmed fish is a hot fish um, so for kidney support it says one pound wild caught salmon or white fish I think is your list squash kale asparagus or cabbage mushrooms egg without shell and some of them do include the shell dogs do like eggshells um, again basil sesame oil and coconut oil so this is one thing that you can feed a dog for kidney support and the cool thing according to my mother is that these are my grandmother's china in these plates that are beautifully arranged with the foods that you feed these kinds of conditions so if your dog let's face it is probably a senior at this point and has any of these issues um, including eye problems there are diets in here for every single kind of problem that your dog could have so that you know what to feed him and then the other interesting thing about this book is there are testimonials like three or four pages in the beginning of the book 
from people that have worked with my sister over the years or even her own dog and uh and it talks about how what, what the other vet's recommendations were and how the person made changes in the diet and then remarkable stories of recovery one that i'm just thinking of off the top of my head a woman's dog was given only a month and a half to live due to cancer and she decided she didn't want to well she couldn't afford to do all the things that they suggested and she didn't want to do that she wanted him to die peacefully at home and she stumbled upon a cancer uh, diet that my sister had suggested because my sisters had dogs with cancer put him on that diet he lived another year and a half so you really are what you eat and you can't afford in my opinion to not feed your dog as well as you can so that you have him as long as you can and there's plenty of different evidence and we're going to talk about this i'm going to do a whole series about foods um, sometimes coming up soon and you know you can't afford to feed your dog things that are killing him when you know what is in dog food you will not want it in your house let alone to be feeding it to your dog and there is lots of mounting evidence that in fact the short lifespans of our family pets could be due to the terrible things that we are feeding them and our um, lack of foresight in giving them the same thing every day you wouldn't feed your kid fruity pebbles for every meal for 20 years and expect them to grow up and be all right oh that would be a terrible thing and so we do the equivalent of that when we're feeding our dogs kibble every day and there are many dogs um, this is just a little side point uh, many dogs i know especially large dogs because it is so expensive to feed them that are on an all kibble diet and kibble is so dehydrating to your dog that it will definitely have an influence on his liver and kidney and bladder and um, excretory functions uh, over time and it is not an optimal diet for a dog to be on just raw i mean uh, just kibble for his entire lifespan and i don't know i look back i mean i fed my dogs some not very good foods that we now know more about for years and they still live to be 15 that doesn't mean that um the the food wasn't bad for them there were many things that went into their lives that made them healthy and strong um, and of course i always keep feed my dogs a lot of what i'm eating and in those days i wasn't a vegetarian and so my dog had other food but feeding kibble dehydrates your dog so much he cannot possibly drink enough to recover from the effect of just eating dry kibble and sure i put water in my kibble all those years maybe that's one reason my dog did a little better but even floating the bowl completely full of water is not enough to rehydrate your dog from the effects of dry kibble and it doesn't matter if it's the 50 dollars a bag kibble or the 25 or the 10 dollars a bag kibble all of it is so dehydrating to our dogs and um, the chance of it going rancid i have friends with small dogs that buy the 50 pound bag and keep that in their house they get dust storage mites in there ants mold sometimes if it gets damp on the bottom in the summers and different environments so kibble is really just fraught with peril and of course if you have a large dog you have to also look at the economics of feeding him but for a small dog there are so many options besides kibble now that you can feed your dog so um, and this book my sister's book the yin and yang of nutrition for dogs has a lot more information about why feeding kibble could be dangerous to your dog's health and it's just a great book and on the cover here is a picture of george the dark dog and little myra in the white i love myra she was a cabochon she was the cutest little dog ever but when my sister got Myra, she was uh, bald, shivering, underweight, so many problems uh, physically and emotionally from being fed a poor diet. And she had just a million health problems. And so my sister, because she's a vet, <clears throat> ended up having Myra. And she fed her a much better diet, a raw diet from the start. Um, and a diet that worked to balance her from Chinese medicine energetics and within just a few months all of her skin problems cleared up her hair grew back she became bright and outgoing and she was like the cutest most wonderful sweet dog I mean look at this picture how can you not appreciate the cuteness of Myra when you see her in that picture and sadly a few years later after her miraculous recovery with food um, seemingly miraculous because really it just makes sense that you are what you eat after all uh, myra developed cancer and 
Um, she again went on a wonderful diet that my sister made for her and she lived out a pretty pain-free happy ending to her life and they took her for walks in her stroller and um, she loved to go for rides on the bike and in the, the convertible and so Myra had a really good quality of life and my sister did everything she could to support this dog with food and with supplements and so Myra had a much better life than she would have had otherwise if she had not probably come to live with my sister and go on the diet that she was on she probably would have died just in misery with her skin problems and her inflammation and her rash and her digestive and kidney and, and the cancer probably would have gotten a lot worse a lot earlier it would have been not a very good life for Myra so thank God for food and the intelligence of feeding your body what it needs so I highly recommend, and I'm sure you can still get this in time for Christmas, but um, it depends on what Amazon says when you go to buy it, uh, because a lot of people have bought this book already. There's, it's, a, it's print on demand, so they actually don't run out, but um, it's hard to keep up at this time of year with the shipping. So this little book by my sister, Judy Morgan, I think is a lifesaver for so many pet parents. And I really can't recommend it enough. And we will be talking more about food and a lot of the things she discusses in the book um, in some future episodes of Conversations with a Corgi. So add that to your Christmas wish list. And in fact, if it's too late for Christmas, just get the book anyway, because it really is going to help your dog so much. I mean, I can't imagine what this dog in particular would be like if I had him on a chicken diet. He, and one of the things that my sister writes about in her book is that dogs that are the fire element like him, he's very excitable, <laughs> um, that they, they tend to have their fire burn out. You know, they can't, it's like a hummingbird. They use so much energy that they don't always last a long time. And in fact, a lot of the earth dogs tend to live longer and I've known quite a few of those. So if I didn't know what I know about food, I would really be doing a big disservice to this little guy. And thank God he gets turkey that his mom cooks for him and he gets his honest kitchen and occasionally he gets some raw duck and some eggs and some um, sardines and some other supplements. So he's doing pretty well. Um, but I think as he's getting older here, I need to pay a little bit more attention to what I'm feeding him because he's a little out of balance right now and it's very, very cold here and he's got excess heat. I it's interesting to me that he's having a bit of a flare-up of his heat situation now. And boy, he's just splooting flat out on the very cold kitchen floor because under my kitchen is the garage where it's not super cold down there, but maybe 45 degrees. And he loves to lay face down with his piggies behind him on that cool tile floor, even though it's literally six degrees outside right now. <laughs> so his heat is really heated up. That's good for me when I'm cold, right, Tristan? <laughs> So it's a good thing I know what I know to be able to feed him what he needs to help him. So again, the book is Yin and Yang, Nutrition for Dogs, Maximizing Health with Whole Food, Not Drugs. So check that out. It is on Amazon. It is on my sister's website as well. It'll be on my website after um, the holidays and I get a few copies from her when I'm down there. And I can't recommend it enough. It's really going to help you know what to feed your dog. And more and more people are so frustrated by the um, additives and the synthetics and uh, just plain outright garbage that is in commercial dog food. And, uh, and worse, really, euthanized animals that have the drugs still in them. Who wants to feed that to your beloved little guy that you live with? So... Um, this book is really important and I really recommend it highly and my sister will be talking about the book at the Pet Expo will be out this winter. She'll be with me in Maryland at the Pet Expo in Timonium at the end of January and then we'll both be at the Super Pet Expo in Edison, New Jersey, which is a huge one outside of New York City in early April and she will be doing talks about the things in this book and in the Maryland um, Expo both she and I are doing um, a couple of our like private seminars, what they call it. And if you have a dog with nutrition issues, you can come to the private seminar with or without your dog and find out what to feed your dog to help him maximize his health. 
And it sounds daunting when you pick up this book and you first just look at all these recipes and these pictures, you think, oh my gosh, where am I gonna get alligator? But my sister does tell you where to source those things. And of course you can look online, but it's not as hard as you think. I mean, if you are just beginning with this, you literally can take the recipe, throw it in the slow cooker slash crock pot um, for the amount of time she suggests and just to have that to give your dog. And you may only have to do that a couple times a week, or you could do up a bunch on a Sunday and put it in the freezer and thaw it out when you need it. So it can be convenient as well and pretty easy to feed your dog well. So look into this book. And of course, you can always check out more information about my sister's uh, recommendations for feeding pets at www.drjudymorgan.com. That's her website. And then on Facebook, where she does a live every day as well, um, it is Judy Morgan DVM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. So check that out and enjoy the last day of Hanukkah and look into feeding your dogs as well as you can. It, their lives really depend on it. Um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to feed your dog well. Um, most of the pets that come to see me for varieties of problems from arthritis to back problems, behavior problems, a lot of it can be traced back to food and changing the food can really change your dog um, because remember, we are what we eat. So thanks for joining us today for this episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Tomorrow, Tristan and I will be at our jobs as an educator or educators. Are you an educator too? Kind of. <laughs> and we will be back on Tuesday for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. for joining us. Make sure you feed your dog as well as you possibly can. Have a great day.